It's Friday, September 3rd, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Let's start off with a little bit of news that is pretty close to home for me. Ohio Linux Fest has extended their deadline for registrations from September 1st, which was two days ago, till September 8th, which is a few days from now. So if you haven't registered for it yet and you're interested in going to OLF, make sure to go ahead and go to ohiolinux.org and fill out the registration. It's completely free unless you would like to pay for one of their paid packages, which includes food and t-shirts and whatever else. But it's going to be a huge, fun event, and I'm going to be there talking, so if you're in the Columbus, in, anywhere in the Central Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, wherever area, make sure you sign up and come hang out. Like I said, it's free if you don't want to pay. Moving right along, Ganache 0.8.8 released this week. It says to have 100% YouTube functionality compatibility with it now. So the open source Flash alternative does appear to be growing quite a bit. Uh, go ahead and give it a try if you want to. I'm going to try it on Arch Linux when I've got some time. Speaking of things releasing this week, Ubuntu 10.10's beta released this week. I did a quick first look at it last night. I will put a link to that in the doobly-doo and probably an annotation somewhere. Loads of new things available in it, some new software, some software replaced, things like that. Speaking of Ubuntu, it turns out that Synaptic is going to be removed from the default Ubuntu install in future releases. It's not been pulled off the docket for Maverick yet, but it looks like it might be gone for Natty, Ubuntu 11.04. Paul Tagliamati, a member of the Ubuntu Loco Council and a member of the Beginners team, has said that they intended to pull it out of Lucid, but it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. So, 11.04, Synaptic may not be in the default install. This was kind of expected as they are actually removing Aptitude from the default install in Maverick Meerkat in 10.10, .10. so they're just removing the tools that are making things not necessarily more complicated, but not necessarily as user-friendly for the beginning users. Speaking of other things releasing, Firefox 4 Beta 4 released some time back, sometime I probably missed it while I was on vacation, but included in this release is Sync, which allows you to synchronize all of your bookmarks and your history and everything across all of your Firefox browsers as well as what they're calling a tab revolution. They're calling it Panorama. This is what was used to be known as Tab Candy, and basically what it does is it allows you to take all of the tabs you've got running and you can categorize them so it makes it easier to find what you've got running. So instead of having 40 tabs across one little bar, you've got little groups that you can open up and move around and resize and rescale. So if you want to try that out, download the Firefox 4 Beta 4 and give it a shot for yourself. And speaking of browsers, Google Chrome turned two years old this week, and with that celebration, they released Google Chrome 6 Stable. Chrome 6 has a minor UI makeover. It's got 15 major vulnerabilities that have been fixed. That's another $4,300 out of Google's pockets and into the pockets of some home developers. And along with that, Chrome 7 is already in the works. Like I said before, they're going to be releasing a new version of Chrome very, very often, and they've already started on 7 but they're releasing a tab-based feature along with it called Tab Pose or Tab Pose. It didn't have the little mark over the E, so I assume it's Tab Pose. They say that it's like OS X's Expose feature, which allows you to see everything at a glance, and it's sort of like the one that's coming in Firefox 4, but without some of the uh, functionality that's available. All right, let's wrap things up with a little bit of tablet news. If you hadn't noticed already, Samsung has announced they're going to be releasing a $200 to $300 Galaxy tablet running Android version 2.2. It has a 7-inch WSVGA screen that's actually 1024 by 600 like you'd see on most netbooks. It has a 1 GHz Power VR processor. It's got a rear-facing 3 megapixel autofocus camera and a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera. It comes with 16 or 32 gigabytes of built-in flash memory and will accept up to 32 gigs of micro SD storage. It will also play 1080p video and record at 720 by 480. Basically, for 200 to 300 bucks, sounds like a pretty cool device, and honestly, I'd love to try one out myself. In addition, Samsung has mentioned that they're already working on their next tablet after the Galaxy Tab comes out. They're looking to put Gingerbread, the 3.0 version of Google's Android operating system, on it, and the next one's going to be Honeycomb, so they're, they're really looking far into the future with their tablets. But that's all I've got for you today. This video was filmed with my new Canon HF21. If you'd like to see an unboxing of it, I'll have a link in the doobly-doo and an annotation. In addition, I put up the vacation vlog on the second channel if you want to check that out, but I'll have links to all that stuff in the doobly-doo and at the closing screen, which you'll see right about 